With the poetry of Philip Freneau, we really begin to move into a different approach to poetry, a different age of poetry. Uh, Freneau is sometimes considered the father of modern American poetry. As you see in his writings, a move away from religious topics and poetry about religion, poetry that needed to be dominated by religious thought, and a move toward poetry that does other things, including the idea that poetry can simply be beautiful poetry without necessarily having to teach us something or have some sort of moral or hidden message or something like that. And some of his poetry is in some ways didactic, but you see a definite move away from the religious thought of our earliest, earlier writers and a move towards uh, something closer to modern American poetry, an American focus on things, a way of saying things, uh, and a, a number of topics that are more American in, in their views. So Freneau really becomes the prime mover of this sort of thing, the very beginnings of it, as we begin to move into the Romantic movement here very shortly after Freneau. Freneau, like all the other writers we've been studying up to this point, did not make a living writing. They had to be employed at something else. And Freneau, even in his old age, had to turn back to the sea or his occupation in farming or some other things like that to try and make a living. And this is something that many people don't realize today, that these early writers really were not writing with the idea of trying to make a living at what they were doing. These people had other occupations, other endeavors in life. They wrote as a sort of sideline. They wrote because they wanted to write, not because they were going to make any money at it. And Freneau is very much the same way here. Even though we see him as a very influential poet, even though he's still fairly widely read today, he made very little money from his writing and was not able to make any sort of living from it at all. And so it, all of these early writers had that in common. You'll find this to be really still the case well into the mid-1800s before people can really begin to make a decent living writing something in America.